Oh, hey there. Why don't you murdock that sexy boat at my pier this week? I have video games. Another week of social distancing, and I have to say this hasn't been a big change in my life. Grocery shopping, D&D night, and my lovely wife being home during the day are the only changes I'm seeing. Well, that and anxiety about the fate of humanity, but I will continue to game on. Not only for myself, but for the greater good of planet Earth. Welcome to part two of Gaming Through a Pandemic. I attempt to keep my sanity through video game escapism. Here's what I have been playing for the second week of April 2020. It has been the final week for Final Fantasy XII. I've passed the 10 hour mark and I'm still not enjoying this. There's nothing wrong with the game, it's just not a good fit for me. I love a good minigame and tinkering with battle strategies and mechanics. What I don't enjoy is robot programming games like the Gambit system that controls the other characters or a boss that came out of nowhere after a long walk through the desert that kicked my butt. It turns out there was a side quest that I missed and I would have had to make that long trek out of the desert to find it. I did some grinding for a few hours and used a guide and got through this, but then I ran into another boss. This second boss was optional, but I went for it and I lost. I'm not enjoying the story or the game mechanics. The music is nice, the voice work is fantastic, and the stage design is amazing. And let us not forget the graphics. This is almost PS3 quality. I love that the Moogles have a solid place in this world. I love the other mythical creatures that are here as well, and I still have a little crush on Fran, but I'm retiring this game back to the shelf. I feel like I'm having commitment issues. The only PS2 RPG that I have beat is Final Fantasy X. I counted up how many RPGs there are for the PlayStation 2 and came up with 125. Only one out of 125 that I have played to completion. What is going on? On the other hand, if we count strategy RPGs, and I think I did in that 125 count, then we can add another 5 games to that list. Still, 6 out of 125. I've got a long way to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to this. Now that we have my existential crisis out of the way, let's talk about free PC games. I've been getting back into the game market for computers over the last year or so, and I've begun to hoard free game releases. While booting up the Steam client the other day, I realized that there were over 30 games I've never played, so I thought it would be fun to dig through a few of these to see if they're any good. Here they are. 100% Juice. I enjoy this. It's a lighthearted card and board game that moves fast. This is a low budget game done right in my opinion. I'm not a fan of how much of the game is left up to chance, but there's still some great gameplay here. Roll dice to move, battle other players as well as monsters on the board, earn stars through various means, and make it back to any base to convert these into a higher level for your character. The battle system is interesting. You roll a d6 for attack and defense, but the player on defense sees the attack roll and gets to decide whether to dodge or evade. If you choose dodge, you'll take at least one damage, but your roll will be subtracted from the opponent's die roll before damage is determined. With evade, you'll take all of the damage if you don't get a better score than the attacker. It's a nice risk versus reward system. I ended up playing this for over an hour. Then there's 200% mixed juice, which I hoped would be an upgraded and polished version of the game, but it's some weird RPG or visual novel thing. The battle system and characters are similar, but I wasn't having fun with this, and it felt like a bait and switch, so I quit playing. The third game that I got with this bundle is Acceleration of Suguri 2. It's a two-dimensional fighting game that controls like a shoot-em-up, but I had trouble getting a grip on the controls. It's an interesting idea, but I'm not into fighting games, though I do love the idea of this style of play. Next up is Khan vs Khan. This feels like a video game version of a tabletop game. It uses a worker placement style of play to gain resources for building and feeding your people. This feels like a kid's version of a tabletop game. I hope that whoever made this keeps making this style of game. This is a step in the right direction. With a bit more complexity this could be a winner, but as it stands I have no intentions of playing this again. Uni. This is a collection of two player minigames. Like the last game, I feel that this one is for kids. It could be great for short breaks as well. For example, if the wife and I were on a long airplane trip, I would break this out for a little bit of fun, but 
After that, I'm sure neither of us would ever play it again. On the other hand, if you have a young child with a friend over, this is perfect for that situation. Gang of Four. This is a card game that's sort of a mashup of hearts and poker. The goal is to get rid of your cards because any cards left in your hand give you points that you don't want at the end of a round. Whoever starts the hand can play as many cards as they want as long as they follow the rules of allowed poker hands and the following players must match the amount of cards on their turn or pass. If everyone passes, the last successful player starts the next round. There's good strategy in this game, including moves that can break you out of tough spots, but I love hearts, and I would rather play that. Despite these feelings, this is a clever game. If you enjoy card games, give this one a shot. The last free game that I tried in the previous week is Arcade Moonlander. This game made me rage a little bit, but in a good way. The goal here is to safely place your ship on a landing pad. This spacefaring vessel uses asteroids controls, and there's also gravity to worry about. If you land too far to the side, too fast, or at too much of an angle, your ship is destroyed and you must try again. I believe you have unlimited lives, as I never had to start the game over from the beginning, but there were plenty of times that I failed and didn't understand why. How far from the center of the landing pad is acceptable? How can I tell if my ship is angled too far to the side? These questions caused some frustration, but it's still a fantastic game. It's a simple game, a simple game that I don't plan on coming back to, but I had a good time. This feels like an 80s game, and I mean that in a good way. Now for an MMO. I used to be an EverQuest addict. I've been chasing that high for years while also trying to distance myself from MMOs so that I don't become an addict again. In an attempt to find a great MMO that's not too deep, I stumbled upon Albion Online. This is a PvP game with a crafting focus. I love a good crafting system and I'm also a big fan of skill trees. The crafting system here didn't impress me, but the skill tree leveling system is interesting. Another thing to note is that there are no classes. What abilities your character can use are based off of the gear that they have equipped. That's a cool way of doing things. I played this game for about a day and I had a good time, but then I uninstalled it. I'm sure I didn't get in deep enough to really get a feel for it, but I'm not interested in the raiding and fetch quest side of things. On the subject of MMOs, EverQuest is free to play now. There are still over a thousand undiscovered items in that game. Maybe I need to give it a shot again. I am still playing Pixelmon, which is a mod that mashes together Pokemon and Minecraft, and I've made some progress on the new mega structure in Pirate Town. I am currently working on the middle layers, which are underground shops and homes. There's still some work to be done on one of the sewer layers, but the bottom level is looking good. I haven't started the top layer, which will be the biggest and most intricate, but I'm having a blast putting this all together. Pixelmon comes with some new blocks that makes things interesting. The elevator block is my favorite. By squatting or jumping on one, the player is transported to the elevator block below or above it. You can use items like a rug or a carpet to hide these, which has led to several hidden paths around Pirate Town. Right now I have three or four secret pathways to get into Pirate Town from the warp pad. I look forward to building and hiding more of these. The very last game I played last week was Dwarf Fortress. I love Dwarf Fortress and I'm excited about the recent update. I haven't been able to play the newest version because I used the Lazy New Pack which modifies the game to be more user friendly, but there is now a beta release of this for Windows that seems stable. If you're not familiar with Dwarf Fortress, it's one of the most complex video games on the planet where your goal is to build a fort with a team of dwarfs and everything fails. It's a hard game to describe, but the motto is, losing is fun. As you try to grow your civilization, train an army, and defend your fort, you'll come under attack by goblins, trolls, mythical cave creatures, necromancers, zombies, were iguanas, diseases, vampires, and so much more. The funny thing about Dwarf Fortress is I never feel like I'm having fun while I'm playing, but the stories you get out of this game are amazing. My first fort was destroyed by a were-rabbit who murdered the citizens of the settlement in front of their children. I was able to trap this beast in a cage, but the children aren't able to do any useful work and they were also mentally scarred. That's Dwarf Fortress for you. My current goal in this newest game is to figure out how to get clean water to my citizens, which is turning out to be more complicated than I had imagined. Once I've got that figured out, there seems to be a tunnel to another civilization here that I may go poking around in. There's a kobold civilization nearby that I may try to destroy as well. I don't know. I'll get the water and military situation sorted out and go from there. The final thing to talk about is a video I found while I was working on the script. There's a new Minecraft mod called Create. This looks like an automated machinery mod and I'm curious about it. 
So there we have it, I'll continue playing Pixelmon, but my time with Final Fantasy XII is over. None of the free games I tried stuck, but there's another 25 or so on the list. Albion Online looks good, but it's not for me. Maybe I'll play EverQuest again. A new Dwarf Fortress fort has begun, and I look forward to seeing it fail. And of course, there's always something cool going on with Minecraft. I love gaming, and I love you. Click the like button. Let's get married. <laughs> that was to you, Lori. I made these videos for you. One quick thing I'd like to mention about Final Fantasy XII before we part ways, I love the warnings it gives on the save screens from time to time. Letting the player know that they won't have access to shops or cities for a while is good knowledge. This was a real problem in Final Fantasy Tactics which also takes place in the world of Ivalice. Make sure to have multiple saves in case you end up over your head and need to revert back to an old save point. Later Tater Tots.